Okay, so this is my second video in a series on how to configure a Synology DS1010 Plus. Now, it's assistance to help configure a basic setup to get this on your network. It should work across all the Synology platforms. Now, this is my first time installing a NAS, so if you see me struggle and stumble, remember my motto, IT means I try, and we're gonna walk through this and try together. So, first episode you saw me explain uh, the system, the Synology DS1010 system, the different types of RAID, and upgrade the hard drive the NAS to three gigs from its one native one gig. So today we're going to be adding the hard drives, which hard drives I bought and the pricing. We're going to be configuring it to the network and we're going to turn on the device. And I'm gonna show you that setup and that's coming up right now. Hey, what's up guys? This is Herbie from Herbie's World, showing you that IT means I try. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe. So on this channel, we do unboxings, desktop support, life hacks, actual hacking, and great product reviews of products just like this, like the Synology DS1010 Plus. We're going to incorporate it in our home network. It's going to be great centralized storage, to have access to it anywhere around the world. Think of it as your own private Dropbox and media repository, private, secure, under your control. And anything we discuss in this episode, you'll find right on the bottom right over here. So let's go check out and install the drives, get it connected to the network, and get this station manager on this device right now. Let's go. Okay, check. so let's take a look. So this is our DS Synology DS1010 Plus and let's take a look at the hard drives. Now, as a rule of thumb, as I stated in my last episode, when you put a hard drive, you want to make it equal or greater. So if you're going to put two terabytes, don't go down to one. If you're going to put four terabytes, don't go down to two. So equal, so if you're going to do four, Make it another four and then bigger. So this came with some hard drives. So I have a 500 here. And let's just pop this out. We have a 250 and it's really easy. All you do is you tap, you slide out. I have another 250 and these seem to be empty. Okay, so all we're going to do is you want to start with populating with the first hard drive closest to the, the bay. So I am going to show you what I purchased and then we're gonna take this bad boy out and include. So I bought two different hard drives. You wanna make sure that they're good. The iron port hard drives are really good. The Seagates are really good and then I bought a competitor. So I want opted to go with eight terabytes so the Seagate, which is here, this is a 7200 RPM drive. I mean, need some systems and cutting. And it's supposed to be, I opted to go fast and big. So fast as in 7200 RPM, it's a 3.5 uh, size hard drive, it's eight terabytes. And big, you want to go fast and big. So let's pop this in here. Take this puppy out. We're going to pop this puppy in. Really simple. And you slip across up until it goes and then you stop it. So I'm going to show you the other hard drive, which I bought from Marshalls. This is a Japanese company. It's highly rated. And this is another eight terabyte, 7,200 RPM. So remember, fast and big. Now, the Seagate costs $279. The Marshall, 
This cost $179. Now you want to check the reviews. WD, Iron Port, Seagate. Next in line, Marshall. So I'm going to pop this puppy out. And we're going to place this in slot number two. All the way in and down. Now you have a locking mechanism here. Now I don't have the key to this, but you can use an octagonal uh, key to fit. I'm going to take these drives out. So this is a 250, this is a 250, and this is a 500. So if you have an array that's that small, I may add this to another uh, NAS that we're going to have in house, but let us now take this out, pop it in, and we're gonna configure this to our network back in a second. So all together now, um, I have entered two eight terabyte drives, 16 terabytes, but with the configuration of the RAID, it's not gonna be a full 16 megabytes. It'll probably be around 12, but they'll have the redundancy. Now, a RAID is not a backup. It's redundancy for drive failure. It's not a backup, so remember that. Let's go connect it to our network. Okay, next, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need to connect your NAS to a network jack, so you get a Cat5, Cat6 cable, and then you're going to connect it to the back of the NAS, right over here. And then the other end, you want to plug the power to the NAS, and next, you want to connect the other end to your home network. And I'm gonna take out my PlayStation 4, pop this in there, and then um, we turn it on. Okay, now that the power's connected, now that the landline is connected, we can power on the device. Now, it's gonna do the NAS is gonna perform a post, which is a pre-operating self-test. It's going to check for the hard drives that are installed in the unit. Now this should take about two minutes. What it's going to do, it's gonna confirm the hard drives that are installed, and it will light up on each drive installed. If the lift is not picking up the drives, you want to check for proper placement in the drive base and it will also check for an operating that's installed. As you can see, it's setting there. You can see that the lights, it detects one hard drive, two hard drives. If this is solid green, it means that there's an operating system put on. If it is amber or orange as it is now, it means that it's looking for an operating system. So now that it's on our network, Let's go configure the next part and get this introduced into our network. Okay, the next step, you want to go to, let's go and open up a new page. And it's findsynology.com. And what it does, it searches your network for your Synology. If you have an older device, it may not be seen here, but then all you have to do, you see right here, no this station found within LAN. And it tells you if you can't find your NAS device, please download the Synology assistance. So let's go and go here. And it's basically, you just type in your device, DS1010, select it. It sees that it's a five bay enclosure. And you just look for the Synology Assistant. I'm on a Mac, so you wanna download the DMG file. 
If you're on Windows, you download the EXE. Okay, so right now we're executing and we double click, hit OK to open. Okay, and let's minimize this and bring this across. So it shows you your device on the network. It says status not installed and your disk station has not installed DSM set up Wizard will help you install DSM and complete basic configuration. Note, all data on hard drives will be deleted. So we can pick a place where we want it. Uh, we can go to... Okay, so now... We need DSM. Okay, next you name the admin password. And you wanna make sure you write it somewhere. Then you hit next. It will give you your IP address configure. Now this is going to be blurred out, of course. Hit finish. And right now it's going to be formatting the drives. And this process should take about half an hour. So sit tight. And I'll be back in a minute. So right now it is formatting the hard drive. It's putting in, it should take about 10 minutes to 25 minutes. You can already see that it's installing the DSM to the hard drive. And if you look at the hard drive, you can see activity going on. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, so the first time I went through, it didn't take the PAT file. So I had to go to archive.synology.com. It tells you the proper PAT file to enter. So I stopped it, went there. It was telling me to go and download DSM 2.2-1037 which wasn't there, but I went through and downloaded the very next one above that, which was 1047, and it took it. So right now, it says about 496 seconds to install, and then it's going to reboot. So let's cross our fingers. It says it's right in the configuration. It says that DSM is installed, and once this is done, we'll continue, and then we can go online to the Synology website and update the DSM. I will catch you guys. As you can see, it is installing. I hear it beeping. It's writing the configuration that is downing. And I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, so it says system has been installed successfully. Setup is complete. You can now go to your server via Synology Assistant. So let's close this. And if you look here, starting services, let's maximize this. And it looks good. 
one Synology server was found. Now let's see if we can install and upgrade the version. So the version is 2.2, 10.41. I'm gonna go to findsynology.com. That's close this. Okay, now that we see that our Mac is online and through the Synology Assistant, you click connect and it will bring up a page where you can log on and do the administration for your NAS. So you type in the password that you like, that you set up prior, log in, I'm not going to save it in case my computer gets lost. And now we are at the management console of our NAS. So you can click management and here is how you create users. Now this is going to be another video that I'm going to do, but you can go in and see all the resources that you have. Everything that you have, you can click in. I'm going to go through this and see if I can install the version first, but your NAS is configured and Next, we're gonna create a user, and I will catch you guys in the next one.